Hey guys, it is Carl Brown of GuitarLessons365.com. have a very heavily requested song for you guys today. We're going to finally learn how to do The Unforgiven 2 by Metallica. Now, the way I just played that riff is not how it's actually played on the recording. And that's the whole reason why I never did this song, is because on the original recording, Hetfield has a Telecaster with a B-Bender installed. Now you can actually see him perform it like this, back in the 90s, back when they first like debuted the song. Um, these days, he just kind of skips it. He doesn't even use it. He just kind of, you know, plays the song without it live. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is try to get you something that's a little bit closer to what's on the album without actually using a B-Bender. So instead of doing bends, uh, which is a little vice, I don't know if you will know what a B-Bender is, but look it up. I don't have time to <laughs> describe it. Um, but anyway, we're going to be doing it with, with some slides and some hammer-ons. So it doesn't sound exactly like it. Um, and unless you have a B-Bender, it's kind of impossible to get it to sound like it. Um, so I'm assuming most of you guys don't. So we're going to play it that way. Rest of the song, boom, we're going to do it just like they do it uh, on the album. Okay, so we're going to take care of the whole song in this lesson. So we got a lot to get to. First off, we're in E-flat tuning. So they're tuned down a half step. So tune every string down a half step. E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. Those notes will be in the description too. Um, and so let's get going here. A lot of these parts have multiple guitars going on. So I'm going to show you the rhythm guitars and the melodies and, and all that stuff. So this opening, when the band first kicks in here, um, we start with just these power chords are going on underneath. <laughs> So that's just an A power chord. Open A string, second fret on the D. Did it a couple times. C power chord, which is off the third fret of the A string. Move that over to the third fret power chord of the low E. And then the last power chord, the open E power chord. So the open E, low E string, second fret on the A. Just repeat that. A, C, G, E. Now over that, along with that, you're gonna hear some uh, clean guitar with there. So that's just gonna be like an A minor chord to a C major, to a G major chord. That's a G major chord, by the way, with the open B string in there and then the E major. Now this E major at the end is kind of different from what you're gonna, sometimes they end these, this verse rhythm, because that's really the verse right there, with an E minor. But for this intro, it's the E major. So we have the A minor to C, G, E major. And then just repeat that. So that goes with those power chords that we just did. And then over that, we have this um, melody using octaves, which is played quite a bit in the song. And that's the melody I played at the beginning. Sounds like this. All right, so an octave here, we're gonna play the fifth fret on the low E string. And then the seventh fret on the D. And if you like, use your third finger there or pinky, it doesn't matter. Make sure you got the A string muted in between so you can just hear these two outside notes. And you can take this shape up around. So I'm just gonna call out the frets here. Five, the fret of whatever the index finger is at. So the fifth fret, seven, five, seven, eight. So we this. I just kinda hit the first one and slid into the other two. Then jump up to the 10th fret and play 10, the octave there, slide it back down to eight, and then back to 10. That's where this. All right, and then we're gonna slide into the 12th fret, back down to 10, and then you're gonna do the eighth fret power chord, slide up to 10, back down to eight. So from that 12,
All right, so so far we have this. And then start back over with the same root. All right, so after you get to that point, you're gonna have a different ending this time. It's gonna go 10, slide down to five, and then play five, slide up to seven, back down to five. So it goes. All right, so that's that whole octave section. You're gonna see that uh, a few times later on in the song as well. Um, so coming out of that, we have the B bender riff, which is really the verse riff of the song. So it is really, Kind of built around an A minor, then a C, and then a G, and then E or E major, depending on how they wanted to end it. So let's start here. Remember, I'm just, this is the part that's not gonna sound exactly like it. You're not gonna, you can't really do those bends and get the bass strings and the notes in there and, and really keep all the strings in tune. So this is a lot easier way of doing it if you don't have a B bender. So we just have an A minor. So open A string, then the second fret on the D, open high E to the first fret of the B string. Just hold an A minor and just pick. And then we're gonna do this. So, so that's gonna zero, two, three on the A string. I'll hold that third fret then play the second fret on the G, I mean the D string, then the open G, and then the third fret on the B. So we have this. All right, so now you hear the timing of that. I kind of held this, this note a little longer and then picked that, so it's kind of an eighth note, two sixteenths. Now when you get here, you ha now have to leave this note, which is not going to sound like the recording. He's holding this note so he can, he's, he can get the bend without leaving this note. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to slide. I'm going to pick the third fret, sliding up to the fifth fret, and then grab the third fret on the high E string, but do it with the, the bar, like start a bar. And then grab, you have a whole bar there. And you're gonna play now just the third fret on the sixth string, second string, and first together. Now I'm doing that with the pick of the low E and then these top two strings with the middle and the ring finger. Now when I do that, I do a quick little hammer on. Hammer to five, pull back off to three. So we have this. Then you're gonna pick the uh, low E string, third fret again. High E string, and then do that little hammer pull again between three and five on the B. So we have this. Then the open low E, and then the open B and the open G string. And now you're gonna take the second fret on the G, first fret on the B, and slide it up two frets, and then back down. So, and sometimes they'll pull this off to start the riff over. And the second time I'm picking through it, instead of going, he goes, he picks across the, the strings more like, pick the D and the G string there on the way up. So what I'm, when he's playing this throughout the song, he's doing slight variations with that B bender. The best way to do it is just kind of do it how we're doing in here and just, just repeat it throughout. So just get that going, get that underneath your fingers right there. Um, and then over that part, we have a little, um, um, while that's playing, there's a little harmony guitar part there. So switch to the neck pick up here, and it sounds kind of like this. So 
So that's kind of sliding into the 10th fret on the B. And then just playing 12, I mean 10, 12, 13 on the B. Then a half step bend and release at the 12th fret. Then to do a pre bend half step bend at that 12. Resolve it down to 9. Pick 9, slide it to 10. So it is. Now that's the top party part. If you happen to have 15 guitar players in your band, one of them can play the lower one. All right, so that's the fifth fret on the G, and then five, seven on the G, over to five on the B. That goes with this. So with this. Then a whole step bend and release at the seventh fret on the G. Then a pre bend of that on that note, the whole step release down to four, then pick, slide up to five. All right, so you're gonna see hear that melody a few times in the song too. So uh, now you know what it is. All right, so now let's get to the the verse again. So we we go. Um, we're actually that B bender riff started it, and we had that little harmony part over it. Then we're at the actual verse here where he's singing over that uh, B bender riff. Um, now, the first time, he's, Hetfield is doing that part while Hammett is just strumming um, really open chords, uh, just like this. So he's just doing the A minor. That we talked about earlier, C and the G, and this time they're ending with E minor. So that's going on with the B bender riff, and then coming out of that, there's a little interlude there that is using that octave riff that we started the song with. That we started the song with at the beginning. Um, that, underneath that though, he's going to be strumming this. So it's pretty much the same thing except that second chord, instead of being a C major chord, it's a C add nine chords. Uh, so we just have... It's just like the same fifth, uh, fifth string as like uh, the A string is gonna be third fret, second fret on the D, open G, and then third fret on the B and the high E. Now to that G, so you don't have to move these two fingers to get to the G. This is the G now with the third fret up there, not the open B string G. All right, and then we get to the second verse coming out of that part. Now, and this is where um, Kirk Hambit's gonna have some little arpeggiated ideas going on underneath it. So it's that little B bender riff that Hetfield's playing and, and um, Hammett's playing this. Pretty simple stuff. So we have just this open A, second fret on the D, and then the G. And then we're gonna uh, do that zero, two, three on the A string again, second fret on the D, open G. All right, from there we're going to go to, which is third fret on the low E, second on the A, and then the open G. And then open E, second fret on the A, first fret on the G. All right, now we 
at the end of the verse is kind of we're going to extend the clean part and we have our pre-chorus which sounds like this now that happens at the one minute and 48 second mark so we have this starts with a d minor chord so that's just the open d second from the g third from the b Sorry, we're gonna play the open D, second fret on the G, then skip over to the first fret on the high E, and then play the B and the G string. Just third fret there on the B, second fret there on the G. So it's kind of slow. End it with a couple sixteenth notes there. And then it gets a little bit easier. We're gonna have, which is first fret on the low E, third fret on the A, third fret on the D the open G. It's kind of cool chord. Then we're going to take it up to this G. We're going to have the third fret on the low E, second fret on the A, and then the open D and G string. So let's pick it across the same four strings. And then back to that previous chord that we just played. And then you're going to end it with an A sus2 chord. Now that's just like an A major chord, except you're going to have the B string open. So open A, second fret on the D, second fret on the G, open B, open high E. So all together for that pre-chorus. All right, now we get to the chorus, which has got a, kind of as an interesting way they, they play this in the chorus. Let me play through it real quick. This is at the one minute and 58 second mark. Uh, and then we'll check it out after I play it. So here we go. So we're gonna play the open A string there, seventh fret on the D, and then fourth fret on the G. So you're gonna, when you play those three, fourth fret on the G, hammer on the fifth fret there on the G. Actually, you probably don't need to hammer it here, you can just pick it. So after you get up there, pick those, strum those chords a couple times. Really need to make it kind of sound uh, kind of palm muted a little bit and kind of control the sound of the strings and make it sound more percussive. Then from there you're going to hit this chord and the next chord is going to be second fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, then the open G and the B. So I just went, that's that. So then we have this. And then you're gonna. So you kind of move up into this third fret there, and he grabs the fifth fret on the D and the seventh fret there on the G. And then, so we're playing three on the A, five on the D, seven on the G. And then the melody changes on the, the G string. Seven, five, Four. Now, I will say, you'll see him play this, like back in the 90s, he would play it this way. He simplifies it a lot now, live. He'll just kind of, he'll play this. And it just kind of go into like a G power, uh, C power chord instead of doing that whole thing. So most of the time when I see the more current live videos, he does it. But back in the 90s, if you see it, he, he, he does the big stretches. And, and then. And then at the end, after the second time through, we had this. Which is played by Kirk Hammett. So we have sliding into seven, then five on the G string, and then five. So it's 
seven, five, four, five, four, over to seven on the D. Just gotta repeat that there. Um, and then we have um, another one of those octave interludes, the same octaves as the beginning of the song. But just under it, we have just big power chords now instead of clean chords. Just the A, the C, the same. But this very last one, instead of going to a power chord, he goes to an E major chord. And that leads us back into the next verse, which is at the, let me get the, the uh, two minute and 41 second mark. So we're back to clean guitar, and there's a, quite a few overdubs. There's this little wah kind of slide guitar, kind of odd sounding overdub here that he never really does live. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of skip it because it just, um, I'll kind of do it what we're going to do a lot. Right now, this second, th this verse, the same verse rhythm going on. A little B bender riff. And then we have over that, Kirk Hammett is doing this. All right, so he's just doing some little simple hybrid picking here. So we're going to base this off of up here, we're going to have this A minor um, triad up here. So it's the 8th fret on the high E, 10th um, fret on the B, 9th on the G. So you're going to pluck the top two strings with your middle and ring finger. And then you're going to pick the note on the G string, just with the, some of this. So that's the picking pattern. And then he's just going to change the shape here to this C major or, uh, shape. So it's basically just moving the 10th fret down to the 8th fret on the B string. So you're going to be barring now across the 8th of the B and the high E. Still playing that 9th fret on the G. Same picking pattern, done twice there. And then we're going to go to this G major um, uh, triad. So this is going to be a bar at the 7th fret uh, uh, across the top three strings with the 8th fret there on the B string. So, so same picking pattern. And then we're going to play the seventh on the high E, nine on the B, nine on the G. All right, so all together. So that just kind of goes with that um, part that we did before, um, the, the little B bender thing. Then it gets to the same pre chorus and then the same chorus, and then that takes us to Kirk Hammett's solo. So let me dial up some tone here, and then I will play through this solo real quick, um, and then I'll show you how to play it uh, phrase by phrase. So here we go. So fun stuff. A lot of similar licks, I'm sure, on purpose as Unforgiven 1. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities with that solo. So we're going to start here with this first race. So that's going to be sliding into the 7th fret of, on the D. And then you're going to pick it a few times. And then play the double stop at the 5th fret on the G string and B string together. And then you can grab the 7th fret on the G and the B together. You can do it with one finger, like that. Uh, I'm not sure how he does it, but you can 
play like that, or I usually like to play them both separately. Uh, seven, the, the double stop, the seventh fret on the G and the B. Pull it down just a little slight, and, and then release. Then you're gonna slide, uh, pick five, slide it down to four. Then play five again, and do a quick little hammer between four to five. Pull back up to four. Over to seven on the D. Back to that four on the G and resolve it with the fifth fret on the D. So we have this. Pick that a couple times. And then we have this next phrase. All right, so we're up here at the A minor pentatonic. We're gonna slide into the 19th fret on the D string. Over to 17 on the G. Kind of a bend and release there at the 19th fret. Back to 17 on the G. 19 on the D. Back to 17 on the G. And then you get to this bend at this 19th fret on the G, so we have this. Now while you play that, play the 20th fret on the B string, and then pick that 19th fret and release the bend. And then pick 20 again, and this time pre-bend the 19, so you can release that again, and then pick 19 again, and the 20 on the B string again. So you do that like three times. So do 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 kind of like. And then the fourth time, just kind of hold them together. And then you release, finally release that 19, and then play 17 on the G, to 19 on the D, back to 17. And then four bends there at the 20th fret on the B string. So let me put that together. So we have this from this. All right, next phrase. All right, so. <laughs> so that's sliding into the 17th fret there on the B. Oh, the high E in the oh, 17th fret, and then back down to the, 15th, the 17th fret on the B. Then that bend, uh, holds that bend at the 20th fret, you're gonna release it and then bend it again. So, let's try this. And put some vibrato on there too. Though. And then we do the same lick again for the next verse. Except you just do basically one bend. And then you do it one more time. And then we're gonna end it with this phrase. All right, so after you've basically done a uh, You're gonna start here now at the 17th fret on the high E string, and then play 2017 on the B. Bend and release at the 19th fret on the G. Pull off to 17. Over to 19 on the D string, and then you're gonna do this same lick four times. All right, so that's 19th fret double stop at the, um, across the B and the G. So play 19 across the B and the G. Then play 17 on the G to 19 on the D. So do that four times. And then you're gonna come back with the 17, 19 on the G. And then that bend there at the uh, 19th fret. So all together. All right, so after that last little bend there, you're just gonna do it, really, you're kinda just still messing around with the same notes. Pulling off 19 to 17, over to 19 on the D. Well, I'll be playing it for you first. So that's really the... 
So that's a pull off 19 to 17 on the G. Over to 19 on the D. Back to 17. And then a bend and release to the 19. Pull back off to 17 and back down to the 19 on the D. So it's kind of a lot of the same stuff, just little variations he's doing. So. And then you're gonna end it with two double stops, the 19 on the B, the B and the G, and the 17 fret on the B and the G. And then we have this kind of fast little lick at the end. All right, and then that leads some to some different octaves here. So we're gonna slide into the seventh fret on the uh, D string over to five on the G. So that those are starts with like a couple of sixteenth notes, and then it goes into sextuplets. Uh, so you're gonna be counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So from here you do at least. So start with those two, and then you'll start to count here. So let's go seven five on the D string to seven on the A, and then five on the D, seven six on the A. So like this. That's the first six. Put put some palmy on there too. And then we're gonna play. So from there, we're gonna play five, three, to five on the low E, and then five, three on the A, back to the five on the on the low E. So with this, so uh, let me start. To... Now from there we have this these octaves. Now there's still you're gonna hear these octaves going. You're gonna hear that going, the same octaves that we've been playing throughout, but that's gonna be harmonized now. So that goes the same. Uh, these are all off the uh, octaves off the A string. So third fret five seven then ten seven ten. 11 and 12 and then the same thing now don't let me forget here the rhythm guitar parts underneath that solo um, are th this, this starts with that this the the same thing that we saw earlier done twice then it goes to the chorus riff so and after that at the end of the second time I play that chorus of or just a quick little <clears throat> No, so it goes seven five on the G string. That five a couple times, and it goes seven five four. After that, and then it goes back to playing um, the the power chords again. Except you're always ending them now with a E major. This is also <coughs> when the octaves come in. All right, then we get back to the verse, which is the same as before. Um, it's just a little bit shorter. And then we go back to the same pre-chorus and the same chorus. And the chorus is extended this time. And you're going to see um, that old familiar melody from the... Start kind of coming in there as an overdub. So it's just like the seventh fret. You can... You know, whatever, however, however you want to play it. So we'll play it up here. So that's just the, the seventh fret on the D, then four, then hammer on five, hit it a few times, back down to four, back down to um, fifth fret of the D. All right. 
right? And then they'll continue doing that. You'll hear that go to that too as well. So it starts the same and then seven on the G and then to the fifth fret of the B string. So you'll hear that a few times and then we finally get to the outro section, um, <clears throat> which is kind of uh, a, an odd version of the chorus. Sounds like this. So that's just that opening those that the chorus. I said each one once. And then you hit that chorus chord to that the second chord in the chorus. So we get and then back to the first two. And then that's just a D power chord off the fifth fret. So we have this. Start over. So from here, now we're gonna do this. So that's gonna be the low E string, third fret. Mute the A string. The open D. Fourth fret on the G, and resolve it down to two on the G. So I hit it same way twice, it's just the note changes on the G string. And then resolve that just to the normal power chord off the third fret of the low E. All right, and then at the very end of the song, there's this kind of little, it's once again, he's using the B bender, and there's a lot of ways you can fake it. Um, you can, one, it sounds like this. Um, so what you can do is have the open A, D string, second fret, and then fourth fret on the, the G, and just bend that note up. Um, another way, if you, if you don't have a, um, any any type of a locking nut or whatever, you can play an A sus two chord and come back here and just push it down with your index finger behind it. And that's basically what that B bender is doing. So that's going to sound like it. Um, if you have a B bender, it's very easy to do. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is uh, I know it's been a long video, but I wanted to kind of get it all into one lesson um, and. Um, it's a cool song. It's got some great parts to it, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.